It's the extreme bokeh version with ugly glasses. Bokeh doke? Bokemon. <laughs> anyway, let's take off the ugly glasses and act like I was able to get the surgery. I had like I had the money for the surgery to get my eyes fixed instead of having to wear glasses, right? Um <laughs> I'm annoyed a little bit at some of the videos that I'm seeing regarding these decisions uh, with, with Google. And I started watching a TJ's amazing, 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 the, the Amazing Atheist's video on the subject. And yeah, the, the, the room's kind of noisy right now, so you'll just kind of have to deal with it. Um, and there seems to be this, and I haven't watched the whole thing. I've only, I've, I've started watching. How, how far into it have I gotten? I am... Three minutes into a... See, I don't have my glasses on, so I've got to go like this. Uh, three minutes into a 12-minute video. So, you know, I've only seen a little clip of it. So he might have actually went into more of this later. But uh, it's just that I'm seeing this so much, and so I need to talk about it. People are blaming, you know, uh, legacy media. They're blaming old media on this. And I'm like, no, it's it's not how are you? I don't even know how people are putting those things together like that. It doesn't make any sense. It's all about the advertisers. People are claiming that this is happening because old school media is jealous of new media. And I'm like, well, well, I'm sure they're jealous, but that has nothing to do with the decisions Google is making. And some people are shoving forth that it's some sort of left-wing conspiracy. I, I'm like, no. And I'll go more into that a little later. It's all about the advertisers. Okay, the advertisers are essentially what controls... It's it's one of the biggest elements of control in media. That's just kind of how that works. That's how it's always worked. Since we've had this kind of media anyway. Most of the shows that you see or have seen in the past, and that's why things are getting messy for uh, legacy media, uh, most of the shows, there's this element where they have to shove forth a mindset that continues to perpetuate the idea of, of commercialism. You know, getting people into the mindset of absorbing the ads so they'll continue to want to buy products, right? That's within the the programs that are that are on TV. There are people that, I mean, especially on things like sitcoms. There are people that will judge. There will be psychologists that come in. I remember even they had in the eighties they they had Bill Cosby come in. Yes, Bill Cosby. And shove forth, and I, some people say I say that phrase a lot, I probably do, but um, that there should be a specific type of message in programs. Now, in the 80s, this message was, for a lack of a better term, it was trying to push forth wholesomeness. And that's where a lot of the whole, let's bring in a psychologist to analyze this program and change things that don't come to certain standards, that's where that came into place so much. I mean, as far as moralizing to get more viewers, um, there's obviously, again, the, the element of trying to make sure that there are things on the show that keep people in that commercialized mindset, that consumerized mindset, so they'll continue to, you know, be in that mode that keeps keeps the status quo going so you'll continue to buy those products, right? But the moralizing that got used changed. The moralizing that was done in the 80s was to try to get those on the right uh, to feel it, it be wholesome. And now we've got them using the left and uh, moralizing based on the left to try to get that side of 
wholesomeness that isn't really wholesomeness. It's just a, a way for them to use the public. So in the 80s, they used the religious community and conservatives. In the 90s, they used the black community. Uh, since, you know, late 90s, uh, they started to use uh, women and the LGBT community. Heavier on the T part of the, the uh, LGBT community as we've gotten closer to, you know, now. You know, all these things that are in flux that they think they can make a buck on, they're going to use. You know, some way to, to promote inclusiveness, whatever it is. You know, in the 80s, you know, well, you, you've got to be inclusive of the family. Family. Family values. Be inclusive of family. And so that's what they would shove forth, regardless of what kind of content was actually being put out. But then again, you know, overall, the thing that is pushed out the most is how can we get people to buy more things? But other parts of it was this element of trying to make sure that what's on TV does not, you know, as far as stuff that's from the TV networks, does not promote a mindset that can be negative. In the 90s, that began to change. But yet we still had the restrictions, the, some of the stupid restrictions we do about nudity, and yet don't have the restrictions on violence. Which has always been weird. We have things so reversed, because the stuff that's actually damaging, well, whatever. Um, in the 90s, we started to switch over to whatever sells. But we still have to... Uh, we still have to follow these rules over here, even if they're arbitrary. But it started to become, you know, whatever sells, and it's it's gotten worse and worse and worse. We can see it in news media. As I said in a video on The Breakfast Club, the problem of what happened with our news media, our cable news media anyway, is when everything became about competition. The 24-hour news cycle became corrupted after 1996 when Fox News and MSNBC came into the picture. At that point it was no longer about the news, it was about the customers. That's all that mattered anymore. News started becoming infotainment and it only got worse and worse and worse. See originally CNN was was decent. CNN came out in in 1980 I believe and uh, it was back in 82 that they had they started the show Crossfire and back then it was decent but by you know the the uh, you know later 90s uh, by 1996 when MSNBC and Fox News came into the picture it started becoming more competitive in all of this competitive elements these competitive elements the underlying thing is still the advertisers the advertisements. Everything's about getting you to watch those things. Watch and absorb. And the television stations that get the most people to buy those the products that are advertised during those slots, that the highest statistics of that are the ones that are going to be the most sought after for, you know, by, by advertisers. And then, of course, they'll have to adjust the demographics for, you know, for that format. Advertisers for a long time have very much targeted their message to specific audiences. Those audiences were defined, well-defined. With YouTube, they're not. They're not very defined. You have age groups, but the age groups don't tell anything. They're not, they're not helpful. So there needs to be more types of ways that, that companies can target people. They've got to figure out what those are. Google has been doing a terrible job at, at defining these new audiences, these new target markets. 
they're still using the old ones and the advertisers aren't liking what they're seeing when they look at things at you know at those older categorizations or the older ways of breaking this apart doesn't give them the results they they want so google is doing a poor job at some of the very things that they built their business on you know, Google's supposed to be all about demographics, but they don't seem to be able to be delivering that reasonably to the advertisers. It's one of those things you keep, you're about to sneeze and then you don't. Um, Google needs to do something that's going to make it harder for the uh, content creators here, but would help things overall. And that's to make it so every time you upload a video that you want monetized, you have to fill out a form describing the exact audience that you want this to come to. You know, there could be a whole bunch of checkboxes, and there can be other, and you write in your own, and then the, all the others that, that come out there, they'll eventually create new uh, categories for you to put a checkbox in, right? Um, they'll, they'll have to just keep expanding that. So, eventually, the advertisers will have more categories for, to, to break apart their commercials into. You know, because right now, the categories they have, because it's, it's still using the legacy methods, aren't working. They're not giving them the results they want. So, now, whether or not mainstream media is going to push this story beyond what it should be you know they're going to make it like oh my goodness look at this well of course of course of course they're going to do that but that doesn't change the fact of what these advertisers are doing what these companies are doing they don't want their products associated with this stuff there is essentially a boycott of 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 YouTube by uh, some advertisers it is happening uh, the significance of this happening might be hyped up but it is happening and Google is going to make changes based off of those things and some people are going on of oh this is a left-wing conspiracy excuse me what these companies care about is inclusiveness it's all about inclusiveness they want their products associated with inclusiveness and the moment that you are are making a video that on a statistical level um is putting down an entire group is demonizing an entire group is demonizing half the population is you know on a statistical level as you know like like if you look throughout history right um if the things that are getting discussed on a historical level leave people out or demonize certain people those things will be automatically considered not uh, advertiser friendly. This isn't about some left-wing conspiracy. It's about algorithms. Now, there are a number of channels that are very, very left-wing who have been demonetized. Or, you know, videos of theirs has been, have been demonetized. Those that are on the Young Turks network, those, you know, there are several channels that are on that, that network. Um, a lot of their videos have been demonetized. Lots of people on the left have been demonetized. This isn't some left-wing conspiracy. I understand that uh, people are concerned about some sort of Marxist thing. Let me assure you, this is corporate. And corporate uses whatever mindset they can to make more money and right now they make the most money out of the uh, left 
they use they, during the 80s media used the right wing now they're using the left wing this doesn't mean that the left there's some sort of left wing conspiracy just like there wasn't some sort of right wing conspiracy in the 80s media is using the left don't blame the left for the media using the left the only way that you can you the, the only thing that you can really do is show the left hey you're being used because they are the left is being used think about how companies that have not been inclusive in general get viewed look at what was done to and i know a lot, number of people are, are get pissy at me for this but i'm like i'm sorry i i'm not going to put different standards on something just because it's oh i'm supposed to because i'm on the left but chick-fil-a right we need to boycott chick-fil-a because the the person who owns it is anti-gay okay whether they're actually anti-gay doesn't really matter the narrative is that they're anti-gay a lot of people feel that that the owners are anti-gay so whatever um are they having anti-gay policies in in the company are they firing people for being gay are they treating gay customers poorly is there anything on that level that they're doing or is it just because they have anti-gay views Oh, they just have anti-gay views, so we we have to boycott them. No, fuck you. That's stupid. It's when a company is, and I know that's that was harsh of me to say fuck you to that, but that that's stupid. It's stupid. You boycott a company when they are when they're actually shown to be discriminatory. When they're running their business according to their beliefs, that's when you boycott them. You you have a business open to the public, it's open to the public, period. That means everyone. Exceptions maybe being, you know, gyms. Women's gyms, men's gyms, although I don't hear about men's gyms, but you know, there can be some exceptions. Dating sites, dating apps that go for specific demographics, hey, you know, there can be exceptions. But a business that's supposed to be offering services to everyone, and then they don't, and they discriminate, um, not only is that violating, in, here in the United States, that's violating some laws, but it's very much looked down upon, right? And rightly so. So companies want their products to be associated with something that's inclusive. Advertising will probably be more friendly towards a Marxist type of mindset. Or pseudo-Marxist. Or a very twisted version of Marxist. Anything that promotes inclusiveness in whatever way it can is going to be something that will be more apt to be advertiser friendly. They block out subjects like uh, a terrorism because that subject is not only so touchy, but you can craftily word something to still put the blame, all the blame, on a huge demographic. And that can easily lead to xenophobic kind of, of viewpoints. I'm not saying it is, but that's what it can so easily lead to. And, and, if, and there's no way for, for algorithms to exist that let, uh, that really can examine things enough to know whether a, a message really is xenophobic or not. They just sort of block the whole thing. These, these algorithms are the problem. These word searches, whether it's actually translating, you know, you know, uh, audibly uh, what's in the video, um, or whether it's in descriptions or whatnot, these sorts of algorithms are 
what's wrong with this system. I don't know how we could push, and maybe there's a petition, okay, that we could push to where Google should implement that thing where you have to fill out a form for every video you want to upload that's monetized. Implement that instead of the stuff they're doing right now. Okay, their algorithms suck. None of these algorithms that these websites have, have done, including like Facebook, and then there's Google+, Plus things, oh, let's sort your, your news feed according to X, right? Um, none of that stuff has worked very well. Now, a, a problem that could come up from people having to fill out a form to, you know, for the categorization of their videos would be people abusing that and claiming that their video is about this or that when it's not. And that sort of thing could end very negatively for some uh, content creators because if they implemented something like this, they could easily make it so if you if you violate that too many times, uh, they could probably terminate your channel not just terminate the uh, uh, being able to monetize your videos, but actually terminate your channel. Because that would be, for, for, uh, for Google, that would be, could be a very, a very costly mistake. Like, your video could have been just the, the final straw for an advertiser to stop advertising on. But these companies need to evolve as well. These companies need to, they should be offering Google, hey, you know, we know that there are, there's the edgy side of, of, of YouTube, and we want to be able to offer t uh, to this side, but there's still that problem of how, where is that line between just giving opinions and racism? giving opinions and homophobia, giving opinions and xenophobia, giving opinions and whatever, right? Whatever ism or something that ends with phobia at the end of it, right? Um, you know, where is the line? That's still difficult. So I think if Google gives them all these new categories, these companies can adapt. These advertising companies can adapt. Google isn't doing their job. And part of this job they're supposed to be doing is what Google is supposed to be the best at. And on YouTube, they're being terrible at it. But I think Google has been making a lot of bad decisions over the past year and a half. It's just just fucktarded decisions. Stuff that just it, decisions that make no fucking sense whatsoever. If they're if they're there to make money, why the fuck are you doing that? Type of thing, right? But to those who are saying that somehow it's it's mainstream media that's causing this stuff to happen, it's like no. Mainstream media may put this stuff up on a pedestal because it makes them look better, right? But the facts are the facts. Um, and Google is going to make changes. And we're probably not going to like the changes.